very good evening. You're watching News at 6 on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha. Wishing all our viewers a very happy new year. Starting with the top stories. First draft of the National Register of Citizens for Assam published. Draft document has names of 1.9 crore people out of the 3.29 crore applicants. Register updated to detect illegal citizens in the state. Thirty-six hours later, counter-operation ends against terrorists who attacked CRPF training camp in Pulwama district. Five CRPF personnel martyred, body of third terrorist recovered. Ahead of Professor Satendranath Bose's 125th birth anniversary, Prime Minister Narendra Modi calls for use of vernacular languages to promote science says it will not only foster love for science among the youth, but also make language a facilitator and not a barrier for students. And after anti-government protests for the fourth day in a row, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani addresses nation, says Iranians are free to protest against the government but must not jeopardize security. The Assam government has published its first draft of the National Register of Citizens. The part draft includes names of 1.9 crore people out of the total 3.29 crore applicants in the state. NRC is a register <laughs> containing names of Indian citizens and is being updated only for Assam to help weed out illegal immigrants in the state. The first draft of the National Register of Citizens for Assam was published on Sunday midnight. It is a part draft with names of 1.9 crore people out of 3.29 crore applicants. The register has been updated to detect illegal citizens in the state. Addressing a press conference, Registrar General of India, Salesh Kumar said, the rest of the names are under various stages of verification. They will be published subsequently after the completion of verification in the final draft. The RGI also added that the entire process will be completed within 2018. It has been a huge task for all of us. There were total number of 3.29 applicants. There were nearly 6 crore documents which needed to be verified. We have made substantial progress. Still there are many verifications which are ongoing a lot of work needs to be done and i'm sure with the cooperation that we have got from all sections of society all organizations all people of assam assam's chief minister sarbanan sonowal however said that those people whose names have been excluded in the first list need not to worry agar isme kisi ka naam nahi bhi raha usko chinta karne ka koi जरूरत नहीं है सरकार हर जो भी बनेफाइड इंडियन सिटीजन है उनके पक्ष में सरकार हमेशा है और रहेगा ग्राउंड वर्क फॉर दिस मैमथ एक्सरसाइज बिगैन इन डिसम्बर 2013 एप्लीकेशन प्रोसेस स्टार्टेड इन मे 2015 एंड अ टोटल ऑफ 6.5 करोड़ डॉक्यूमेंट्स रिसीव्ड फ्रॉम 68.27 लाख फैमिलीज अक्रॉस असम People can check their names in the first draft at NRC Seva Kendras across Assam from 8 a.m. on January 1st. They can also check for information online and through SMS services. The Supreme Court, which is monitoring the entire process, had ordered that the first draft should be published by December 31st. Assam is the only state that has an NRC which was first prepared in 1951. Bureau Report, Sabha Television. And in the latest update on the Pulwama terror attack, 36 hours later, the operation against the terrorists has been called off. The body of a third terrorist was recovered today. On Sunday, heavily armed terrorists launched a suicide attack on a CRPF training camp in Pulwama in Kashmir, in which five CRPF personnel were martyred. Bodies of three terrorists were also recovered at the end of the counter-operation. More details in this report. The counter-operation launched by security forces against the militants who attacked a CRPF training camp in Pulwama district of Jammu and Kashmir ended on Monday. In the terror attack, five CRPF men were killed while three others were injured. 
Security forces called off the search operation after the recovery of the body of a third militant. Bodies of two terrorists was recovered on Sunday. It was because of the alertness and the professionalism shown by the unit that they got limited to only one, uh, one or two buildings. And as you know, the operation uh, carried out and our men brought, uh, fought bravely. Uh, they showed uh, a high degree of professionalism and finally all the three militants uh, were killed. The attack happened on Sunday when terrorists stormed the CRPF camp at Lethpura in Pulwama, armed with under-barrel grenade launchers and automatic weapons and started firing indiscriminately. According to security forces, this is the first time local terrorists carried out a suicide attack, which has been claimed by Pakistan-based Jaish e Mohammed. The two terrorists have been identified as Manzoor Ahmed Baba from Pulwama and Fardeen Ahmed Khande from Thral. Kashmir mein CRPF camp par atankwadiyon ne kairana hamla kiya aur unka muhtor jawab dete hue hamare CRPF ke panch jawan shaheed hue hain. Main itna hi kehna chahta hu ki aise hamare bahadur jawanon ke upar sare desh ko naaz hai. Aur is sankat ki ghadi mein पूरा देश उनके उनके परिवार के साथ पूरी मजबूती के साथ खड़ा है शहीदों का यह बलिदान किसी भी सूरत में व्यर्थ नहीं जाने पाएगा यह मैं यकीन दिलाना चाहता हूं वो बुखलाहट में चाहे वो क्रॉस बॉर्डर फायरिंग करता है हमारे चौकियों के जो है फायर करता है सिविलियंस को मारता है चाहे बैड एक्शन करके जिस प्रकार से वो कारणा हरकत करता है चाहे वो उग्रवादियों को अंदर धकेल के उनको मरवा रहा है फिदाइनी अटैक करते हुए लेकिन हम उसकी जो है पूरा जवाब दे रहे हैं उसको मुंह की खाली पड़ रही है और साथ साथ डिप्लोमेसी के फ्रंट के ऊपर पाकिस्तान जैसे एक्सपोज हुए है और पूरी दुनिया में वो जो है आइसोलेट हुआ है आने वाले वक्त में आप देखेंगे कि पाकिस्तान को जैसा वो करेगा उसको वैसा ही सब सिखाया जाएगा the retelling ceremony of three CRPF Jawans was also held in their hometowns. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. Amid the ceasefire violations by Pakistan, External Affairs Minister Sushma Suraj has hinted that any bilateral cricket series between India and Pakistan is unlikely. Suraj said this to Parliament's Consultative Committee on External Affairs during a meeting. Swaraj also said that she had met Pakistan's envoy to India and proposed to him that both countries release prisoners above 70 years of age or women or of unsound mind as part of humanitarian aspect of the relationship. The agenda of the meeting was relationship with the neighbourhood. On the possibility of an India-Pakistan cricket series on a neutral venue, the external affairs minister said it seemed unlikely until Pakistan stopped cross-border terrorism and firing, saying that terrorism and cricket cannot go hand in hand. Members also sought to know about the impact of Maldives-China proximity on India. The ministry replied that the relationship between India and Maldives remained close and cordial. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi has pitched for the use of vernacular languages to promote scientific communication. This, he said, will help develop the love of science in the youth. He was addressing the curtain raiser ceremony of the commemoration of Professor Satendra Nath Bose 125th birth anniversary in Kolkata via video conferencing. Okay. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressing the curtain raiser ceremony to commemorate the 125th birth anniversary of Professor Satendra Nath Bose via video conference. Hailing Bose for his work on popularizing science among the people through vernacular media, the Prime Minister called on scientists to do the same. Professor Bose was a crusader for teaching of science in vernacular languages. He started the Bengali science magazine, Gyan O Bigyan, to promote under or to promote understanding and love of science in our youth. It is vital that we promote science communication in a big way. Language should not be a barrier but a facilitator in this task.
He urged scientists and technology experts to focus on innovations that will resolve the socio-economic problems of the country and make a positive impact on the lives of people. Development, growth and transformation ke liye science or technology ek extraordinary engine ki tarah kaam karti hai. Main aap logon se देश के वैज्ञानिक समुदाय से फिर एक बार आग्रह करूंगा कि अपने इनोवेशन की दिशा हमारे सोशो इकोनॉमिक चैलेंजेस को ध्यान में रखते हुए तय करें Pitching for a strong collaboration between academic and research and development institutions, the Prime Minister announced that the government is setting up 20 institutes of eminence across the country. He also listed the various infrastructural developments his government was undertaking to shore up the science and technology sector. We have been working in 20 such institutes in अपनी धाक जमाएं जिनकी पहचान वर्ल्ड क्लास के तौर पर हो इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एमिनेंस इस मिशन में शामिल होने के लिए सरकार हायर एजुकेशन से जुड़ी प्राइवेट और पब्लिक संस्थाओं को निमंत्रित कर रही है हमने नियमों में बदलाव किया है कानूनों में बदलाव किया है पब्लिक सेक्टर के जो संस्थान चयनित होंगे उन्हें एक तय समय में 1000 करोड़ रुपये की आर्थिक मदद भी दी जाएगी Born on the 1st of January 1894, physicist S. N. Bose is best known for his work on quantum mechanics in the early 1920s. He discovered what is known as the boson particle and worked with Albert Einstein to define one of the two basic classes of subatomic particles. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And moving on now to an update on weather. Cold wave conditions continue to grip large parts of northern India. In Jammu and Kashmir, the mercury settled several degrees below freezing point. Temperatures in South Kashmir's Kazi Goon settled at a low of minus 4 degrees Celsius. Srinagar recorded a minimum of minus 3.6 degrees Celsius, while Leh in the Ladakh region braved the coldest night so far this year at minus 15.2 degrees Celsius. In Himachal Pradesh, strong icy winds swept Shimla and surrounding areas, and the sky remained heavily overcast. The temperature dropped to minus 9.6 degrees Celsius in Kilong. Solan had a low of 2.7 degrees Celsius, while Shimla recorded 4.2 degrees Celsius. In Uttar Pradesh, dense fog and cold waves slowed down normal life. At 6.4 degrees Celsius, Lakhimpur Kheri was the coldest place in the state. Day temperatures fell in several parts like Varanasi, Allahabad, Kanpur, Jhansi and Agra. Meanwhile, Delhiites also witnessed dense fog for the second day in a row, with minimum temperatures settling at 5.7 degrees Celsius. As many as 350 planes flying into and out of Delhi were delayed, diverted or cancelled as the season's worst fog reduced visibility to 50 metres at the Indira Gandhi International Airport. 15 trains were cancelled, 56 delayed, while 20 were rescheduled. According to the Med Department, the national capital will witness dense fog tomorrow as well, before becoming moderate in the next day. This uh, scenario, uh, now as, as such the winds are also comparatively lighter and the moisture availability is also seen. So due to that, this type of fog, uh, it is uh, likely to, we are expecting this to continue for another three more days. Afterwards, uh, its uh, severity may decrease. We are expecting this cold day also to continue for at least two days more. The output of the eight major core sectors rose by 6.8% in November as compared to the 5% rise seen in October. This is more than a 12-month high. This was led primarily by a double-digit jump in cement and steel production as well as a sustained rise in refinery products. The eight core segments, coal, crude oil, natural gas, refinery products, fertilizer, steel, cement and electricity, 
cumulatively grew by 3.9% in the first eight months of the current financial year. This was lower than the 4.9% growth in the corresponding period of 2016-17. Economists suggest this could, lead, uh, this could point to an overall industrial revival from November onwards. This, in fact, is good news considering the index of industrial production plunged to 2.2% in October, slowing down for the third straight month. And time now for some updates from across the country in Nationwide. Two managers of a rooftop pub in Mumbai have been arrested in connection with the fire in the Kamla Mills compound on the 29th of December. 14 people lost their lives in the fire. Kevin Bawa and Lisbon Lopez, who worked with the One Above pub, have now been sent to police custody till the 9th of December. Reports say that the two were present in the pub when the blaze started, but fled without helping the guests. Cases of negligence and culpable homicide have already been filed against the pub owners. The two were arrested in the same case. An independent MLA from Rajasthan, Rajkumar Sharma, has tendered his resignation from the Assembly as a mark of protest. Sharma is a former Minister of State for Medical and Health. He announced his decision to quit from the House in protest against the government's handling of the doctor's strikes in November and December. No punitive action will be taken against some unauthorized colonies in Delhi till 2020. This after President Ramnath Kovind gave his assent to the National Capital Territory of Delhi Law Special Provisions Second Amendment Act 2017. The new law has extended time to the 31st of December 2020 to protect some slums and unauthorized colonies in the National Capital Region till a framework for orderly arrangements are in place. And time now for international news. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani addressed the nation on Sunday calling for restraint in the backdrop of widespread protests against his government. Calling for dissent that would help the improvement of the country's conditions, he took a dig at the United States President Donald Trump for supporting the anti-government demonstrations in Tehran. Iranians are free to protest against the government but must not jeopardize security. President Hassan Rouhani said this after four days of demonstrations. Speaking at a cabinet session on Sunday, he acknowledged that there were problems that needed to be solved but warned that violence will not be tolerated. He acknowledged grievances about the economic situation, a lack of transparency and corruption but defended his record. مردم میخوان در بخش قانونگذاری، در بخش اجرایی، در بخش غذایی، در بخش های دیگر کشور Meanwhile, in a Twitter message on the issue, U.S. President Donald Trump said, Iranians are finally getting wise as to how their money and wealth is being stolen and squandered on terrorism. Rouhani rebuffed Trump's comments, saying that he had no right to sympathize with Iranians since just a few months back, he called Iran a terrorist nation. آمریکایی که در داخل خودش اون همه مشکلات داره مردم آمریکا که از شرایط امروز سیاسی آمریکا و اجتماعی آمریکا نگران هستند A crowd of Iranian Americans rallied in front of White House on Sunday to voice their support for the ongoing anti-government protest in Iran and to call for overthrow of the leadership of the Islamic Republic the protests in Iran have been the biggest show of dissent since huge rallies in 2009. There have been clashes in several cities. The anti-government protest started on Thursday in northeastern city of Mashhad on the issue of rising food and gasoline prices but spread to other cities and turned political. <laughs> تمام مردم ایران از دست این ملاهای 
کثافت آزاد بشن نان یرز اگو دیر واز استیل هوپ دت دیر آر تو گروپ ویدین دی ایرانیان گاورمن بات دیس دمونستریشن شوز دت دت ستوری از آور دی موتو آف دی دمونستریشن واز رژیم چینج The temporary restrictions on the apps, Telegram and Instagram have been imposed to maintain tranquility. Telegram in particular is very popular in Iran, with more than 50% of the country's 80 million population said to be active on the app. President Hassan Rouhani was re-elected in May. He championed the 2015 nuclear deal with Western powers that saw sanctions lifted in return for a few limits on Iran's nuclear development. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And at the start of the new year 2018, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has warned the United States that the nuclear button was always on his desk. In his annual New Year's Day address, Kim Jong-un said, that the entire mainland of the United States was within the range of their nuclear weapons and that the nuclear button was always on the desk of his office. He further said that this was not a threat but a reality. However, Kim also declared that his country was a responsible nuclear and said, in fact, he said that his country was a responsible nuclear power and said that as long as there was no aggression directed at it, he said the country does not intend to use nuclear powers. While he remained defiant in his confrontation with Donald Trump, Kim Jong-un struck a major conciliatory note on relations with South Korea, offering to start talks on sending a North Korean delegation to the upcoming Winter Olympics in Pyongyang. Tension has been rising between the United States and North Korea in the recent months. Last week, the UN Security Council unanimously adopted new sanctions on North Korea to further strangle its energy supplies and the use of North Korean workers overseas. And for all the international updates, here's the global buzz. A Costa Rican plane crashed into a wooded area, killing 10 U.S. citizens and two local pilots. The accident occurred in the mountainous area of the Punta Ailita beach town near the capital of San Jose. Director of Costa Rica's civil aviation agency said the aircraft, which was operated by local company Nature Air, crashed minutes after takeoff, but officials had not yet determined the cause of the crash. At least eight people were killed after a boat carrying 48 passengers capsized in Indonesia's Kalimantan Island. The National Rescue Agency said 13 passengers remained missing while the rest had been rescued. The boat was on its way from Tanjung Selor to Tarakan on the Indonesian side of Borneo Island when it overturned and sank. A huge fire in Liverpool destroyed hundreds of vehicles and prompted evacuation of multiple buildings in the surrounding area. Firefighters battled the blaze. The Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service said the initial investigations ind indicated that an accidental fire within one vehicle spread to others. And here are some updates from the world of sport in Sportsbeat. Indian cricket team skipper Virat Kohli retained second spot in the latest ICC test rankings. Australian captain Steve Smith took the top position on the table. England's Alastair Cook jumped nine places to be eighth after an unbeaten double century in the Ashes series. There was no change in the top nine positions in the bowler's rankings, with England's James Anderson leading the board. India's Ravichandran Ashwin finished third, while Ravindra Jadeja holds the fourth position. Martin Guptill returned to the New Zealand 13-man squad for the first two ODIs against Pakistan. The opener recovered from a hamstring injury and will replace George Berka in the side. Colin D. Grandholm, whose series against the West Indies team, was not included in the squad. New Zealand and Pakistan will play five-match ODI series, followed by three T20 internationals. Australia's Daria Gavrilova beat Eugenie Bouchard in straight sets. But Tanasi Kokinakis was made to work harder to beat Canada's Vasek Pospisil to give Australia a winning start to their Hopman Cup campaign against Canada. 
Gavrilova beat Bouchard 6-1, 6-4 in the round-robin stage of the eight-nation mixed-team event at the Perth Arena. In the men's singles, Kokinakis beat Pospisil 6-4, 3-6, 6-3. Canadians, however, won the doubles match. Arsenal played out a frustrating 1-1 draw against West Brom to climb to fifth position on the table, three points behind fourth-placed Liverpool. Alexis Sanchez scored the opener in the 83rd minute through a free kick, which went inside the net after a deflection from James McLean. But a last-minute penalty from Jay Rodriguez levelled the match at 1-0. Jay Rodriguez scores! And that's it from us in this bulletin. Thanks for your time.